In this video I'll unbox the printer, assemble it, check the out of the box pad flatness and the precision of prints. But before I get there, why Bamboo Lab? I have an old ender but I don't trust the printer when it comes to long prints. I don't really like to leave it unattended. So I've been thinking about getting a new printer for quite some time. And I brought three printers into the final selection. Quidi for the size of the printing surface and the heated chamber. Quidi K1 for the price. And Bamboo Lab P1S for the AMS unit and overall plug and play reputation. However, it doesn't mean there are no issues. But many of them are caused by the community of newcomers not willing to search for a solution to the simplest issues. A good example is this one. So, which printer I chose? You already know from the title. How did it happen? Well, I'll give you advice. Don't buy stuff when you are drunk. Anyway, it is time to switch my old printer for a new one. See that ripped side? Ah, it's looking bad. But luckily it is very well packed. If you feel like I'm missing the AMS unit, it is hidden inside. Before I power up the printer, I need to unscrew three screws to release the bed. Part of the package is also this box. Where is the filament holder, glue stick, spare hardened nozzle, plug, screen and some spare parts. During waiting on new printer, I received this email from Bamboo Lab and a spare extruder that arrived before the printer itself, which is nice. I checked how clean are the carbon rods before I started the machine. and I carefully oiled the idlers. Now it's time to connect the AMS unit.
I'm using green PLA basic, which is part of the package. You also get a sample of PLA CF and PLA support. And now has come time for the first power up. I would like to test how flat and trimmed the bed is right from the factory. So I made this tiny aluminum bracket for a dial indicator that goes instead of the hot end. I swipe the whole surface in a regular grid and the difference between the lowest and the highest point is 0.6mm, which is quite a lot, but the bed itself is not super sturdy. It springs as you can see, however it could be improved. After some fiddling I was able to get it within approximately 0.25mm, which is way better. Now I'm going to do something that is considered a legal move in the printing community. I'm not going to print Benchy. There are already too many Benchies on YouTube. So I printed a little table instead. And it looks perfect. Now it's time to do the motor noise cancellation calibration, which makes your printer do this funky stuff. Don't get me wrong, I don't really care much about a noisy printer, because my workshop usually sounds like this. Time to reprint the table silently. I did a comparison of sound levels before and after, and there is just a little difference, because there is a lot of noise coming from fans. And finally, time to check the printing precision. I prepared this simple model to check roundness. I did a similar print but in the z-axis to see if there's any sagging. And I plan to compare X1C to my old Ender. So I did the same print with a similar setup, just the printing speed is 55 compared to 200 of X1C. So the print took 4 hours compared to 1 hour with bamboo light. And the print quality is of course better with X1C. But we are also comparing a printer that costs 150 with a printer that costs 1500. But how about precision? Well, all the dimensions are shorter from the bamboo, but there is a similar difference between X and Y, which is good. And the ender, more precise. Yes, you heard me right. This old fella is more precise than out of box bamboo lab. Except for the Z axis, which always comes a little bit shorter.
I did the same measurements for the hole oriented perpendicular to the bed. And the results are similar, except for the z-axis. But it is caused by bed support. I also checked the flatness of the top surface with a surface plate and dial indicator. And the result is 0.6 mm. I did the same for the part printed by the ender and the result is 0.11 mm. I made some additional prints to see how parallel the printed surface could be and also how perpendicular the XY axis are. I took the dimensions and checked the top layer flatness. If we see the bottom layers against the light, you can see how the edges are lifted because I didn't use a brim. Top layers are looking better. And now for the perpendicularity of XY axis. I did the basic measurements. I also check the flatness. Unfortunately, I don't have a better option for measuring perpendicularity than this square ruler, but it looks good. As you can see, the light slit is even on both ends. I tried to plot the difference between theoretical and all the measured values and the good thing is that it is somehow linear, so probably caused by shrinkage. It also brought me idea for some advanced testing. So I prepared this simple model. Oh wait, it reminds me of something. I did the written flatness test. And then I measured every single step. And the result is plotted here. It is more or less linear and therefore could be corrected by scaling, which is good information. For the outro, I'm currently designing a gearbox for a rolling mill. And it is nice to have an option to dry test the parts prior to machining. And that's pretty much it. I've been using the printer for a month as I'm finishing the voiceover and I have to state that I'm satisfied. No babysitting, no significant issues. I'm simply happy with it. So thanks for watching and till next time.